Mary Poppins, a universal image of goodness and purity. But does it go along with the lady who created her on the screen? Well, the image is something that does follow me around, and it would be foolish to pretend that it doesn't. Mm. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, I really do go to the bathroom, and I really do <laughs> take a glass of wine occasionally and things like that, and I'm not as uh, square and saccharine as Mary Poppins or The Sound of Music. Good morning. I'm Sylvia Chase of CBS News. In this next hour, we'll talk to Julie Andrews to find out about the real woman under the Mary Poppins umbrella. Julie Andrews hasn't made a movie in three years, and it's been almost as long since we've seen her on television. Quite a conspicuous lack of visibility for the only star in Hollywood who can claim to be the highest grossing performer in the history of movies, thanks to the $250 million taken in by her eight pictures. Julie Andrews is profiled now for October Magazine by Hollywood reporter David Sheehan. When the question comes up, whatever happened to Julie Andrews, some say she's been absent from the screen because there's no longer a market for the purity and goodness image associated with the star of Mary Poppins and the Sound of Music. And then her name suddenly sprang up in the middle of the Nevada desert late last summer. Julie Andrews had finally consented to play Las Vegas, a decision that surely seemed calculated to change the Julie Andrews image. But it turned out that Julie wasn't looking for a new identity at all, just a new way of expressing her old identity, an identity she seems perfectly happy with, and audiences seem to love, too. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver white wings that melt into spring, these are a few of my favorite things. And as Julie's favorite things warbled on, you couldn't help wondering how authentic all of this sweetness and light really is to the person who has to live day by day with the Julie Andrews image. Well, the image is something that does follow me around, and it would be foolish to pretend that it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, uh, you know, I really do go to the bathroom, and I really do <laughs> take a glass of wine occasionally and things like that, and I'm not as... Uh, square and saccharine as Mary Poppins or The Sound of Music. I'm certainly no Puritan and I love uh, you know, to be zany and wacky and, and uh, I, I think I probably am a little crazy. What about that image though? The um, you, you mentioned the word saccharine and uh, the wholesome and the goodness and the uh, sweetness and light and Mary Poppins, Sound of Music, Good Housekeeping, Seal of Approval, all of that. <laughs> Do you feel that you've been limited by that? I suppose to a degree I have. I think people, uh, certainly uh, on film, people aren't likely to cast me in some bizarre role that's the total opposite of that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I must say it's an image that I don't like to knock because uh, the it does seem to give an enormous amount of pleasure to an awful lot of people. I mean, the response from audiences has just staggered me. I had not expected that. Since I haven't done live theater for something like about 15 years, you can imagine it's a big surprise. Do you think that wholesome image of sweetness and light, um, that kind of image of woman is obsolete now? Well, I think were it a cloying image, anything that's not true is quite obsolete. But if it's something that's mixed with other things, if it's part of one, then I don't think it's obsolete if it's fairly genuine. Over the years, have you ever felt any kind of tinge of hypocrisy or anything like that? Nobody can be that good. Oh, God, yes. Yes, yeah. uh, of course. I mean, uh, well, uh, the film business is generally based on a lot of hypocrisy, isn't it? Mm. I mean, it's all larger than life and fantasy and so on. Well, what are your personal feelings about the image of women we see today? Um, more aggressive women, uh, sexually open, lots of R-rated movies, uh, there's nudity involved and so forth. Well, first of all, I think that it that it should all be allowed. I think that anything should be allowed to happen, but I think that the public has become maybe more responsible. That's a very sweeping statement, but I think in general I feel 
that there's nothing wrong with nudity in the right uh, way. There's nothing wrong with pornography. There's nothing wrong with comedies, dramas. I think everything should be done, and then that gives the public a chance to be selective. Um, but how do you how do you react to the way women, particularly, are being portrayed? Mm -hmm. I'm very much in favor of it in general. I think. I obviously am a very liberated woman because I work. Uh, any revolution always has to be pushed too far yeah. to make a point, and I think it will find its balance. Uh, and I think that obviously all the things that, that ladies are striving for are fairly valid, certainly in terms of equal pay and things like that. What kind of image of women would you like to see portrayed on screen today? Truth, I guess, is just what I'm saying. Um, whatever it is, as, as long as it's... Uh, I mean, in my own films, I suppose, for instance, Maria and the Sound of Music is obviously a fantasy. Um, but in a way, it represents something that's lovely and true. It's to do with the outdoors and kids and things like that. So there is a grain of truth in it. I, I'd like to see... Not just that, but all kinds of uh, things that give people some feeling inside, either identification or pleasure or um, thrills, whatever. It, it, it would be terrible to be stuck with one thing. Julie herself seems to be stuck with one thing, though. Despite her sometimes brilliant efforts to display her many talents, as in this production number from her ill-fated television show of a few seasons ago, to millions of people, Julie Andrews is still the standard bearer for goodness, purity, sweetness, and life. You think that's really all there is to it? That's terrible. No, not all. But I mean, you know, as, as you said, that's certainly you can't ignore that. You can't dismiss it. It's there and in, in some mass mind that exists. So you, you have to live with that, right? What, what's it feel like to live with that? Um, it's not difficult to live with in that I don't do very much work these days. This is a sort of uh, fairly rare outing for me, and I don't plan to be doing an enormous amount of work. Um, since Blake and I married, I found I've needed to work less, and um, we prefer to live very quietly, and so... I mean, we, we live in Switzerland and uh, raise the kids, and life is fairly normal and ordinary and fun. And so really, I don't have to deal with the image very much. So the turning point, really, was Julie's marriage to film director Blake Edwards back in 1969. They live now in the Swiss Alps, a setting that looks like it's right out of Sound of Music, and their primary passion is raising their children. But the marriage has definitely changed Julie's attitude toward work. Well, I've done less since my marriage, but the thing is, I think I've needed to do less. Um, you know, when I was much younger, and I think a lot of people in their youth do things because they need the gratification and they do it for their ego. In the old days, if life was tough, one thought, oh, well, I've got the theater this evening, or, you know, I've got the film to make. I can block out all those uh, um, worries and problems or sadnesses, whatever it might have been. And uh, these days, I have less need to gratify myself in those ways or to feed my ego since my ego is quite happy with the family. So. The last time Julie gratified herself with a movie role it was the Tamarind Seed in which she enjoyed a passionate extramarital affair with Omar Sharif a definite departure for Mary Poppins but when you ask Julie about Tamarind Seed the main thing she remembers is that it was directed by her husband Blake Edwards. Uh, what about Tamarind Seed? Does that have a special place in your heart? Oh yes it does because it was made with Blake which and that's the best of all possible world is to be making a film, a lovely film, with one's husband. I mean, uh, how about your husband Blake Edwards? How important has he been in your career? How much of a mentor is he? To he's you? quite a large mentor. Uh, I re rely on him for just about everything: taste and uh, final decisions. Um, he has a, a very good eye. He knows me very, very well indeed. And uh, I think hopefully it works the other way too. He asks me for advice on scripts and things like that. We have a very good eye about each other. Mm -hmm. So I would turn to him always, first and last. How does that work out? You're a liberated woman and you have a strong, obvious spirit of independence. But then are you maritally kind of dependent? Is that what you're saying? Well, but I think that that is being 
free. I choose to, I mean, I prefer and I'm happy when Blake is, I guess, a little more dominant than me. I love to work and he allows me to work, which shows that he's fairly uh, uh, generous about those sort of things. But I do prefer uh, that he makes de decisions. I'm a fairly insecure person as far as that's concerned. But I consider that a kind of freedom, really. It's a give and take on both our parts. Mm. When you use a word like uh, allow, Bl Blake allows you to work, uh, does, is, does that in some way define you? No, know, I mean, a lot of husbands might be threatened by their wife going off and being a glamorous lady for a couple of weeks or, a, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, he gets a bit uptight when I'm doing a love scene with some nice gentleman on the film, especially when he's directing it. It's very difficult for him to say, that was fine, but do you think you could do it a little better? <laughs> it, it, it's a slightly difficult uh, problem, I think, for any man. In and he's position. right there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he's super about it. And uh, that's what I mean by allowing me to work. He knows that it, at times uh, it's good for my ego. I feel terrific afterwards. And, uh, he, I guess that makes me a little bit more interesting to him. I don't know. But does the independent, liberated woman need the husband's permission? Well, I wouldn't call it permission. It would be simply awful if I just blasted my way off without even saying, hey, is it convenient to our family and uh, mm -hmm. how does it fit in with our plans? Mm -hmm. That would be very selfish of me. And a selfish person is one thing that Julie Andrews is not. At least that's my impression of her. She's very much a lady, I think, and a thoughtful lady at that, whose big success in Las Vegas does disprove the idea that there's no longer a market for wholesomeness. I mean, there she was in a town known for its all-nude stage spectaculars and its off-color comedians, and she was playing to standing room only sell-out crowds every night, singing her same old ballads of sweetness and light, for which she was paid a quarter of a million dollars proof enough that there is still an appetite for goodness and purity and an audience for actresses who want to remain ladies in the more traditional sense. David Sheehan, CBS News in Hollywood.